talking to Dr. Christine Romine from Phoenix. She's um, a member of our medical advisory board and board of directors at uh, Clean Skin Care. Uh, thank you for being on. Dr. Romine is uh, trained in internal medicine and dermatology and Mohs. She's like a quadruple threat uh, <laughs> in uh, every aspect of dermatology and I've learned a ton from her. So welcome. Thank you. Um, good. How, uh, how are things in Phoenix? Good, really good. Starting to heat up here, starting to get to feel like summer. We went from 80 to 100 in a matter of a couple of days. So it's going well. Um, we're, we're staying busy. Um, I had the opportunity and the advantage of being able to keep my office open throughout this time period, very limited. However, uh, I do superficial radiation therapy and those patients need to come in regularly for their sessions so they don't have to um, end up going to do surgery, which is why they chose superficial radiation therapy in the first place. So we've kind of had a little ongoing cohort of patients that we've been able to sort of measure their their fear factor and their willingness to come in to the office. So I really feel like we've got a, a head start. Our plan is um, our governor has allowed us to open sort of on a graduated basis starting May 1st. So we've been cleared by the Arizona Health Department to start seeing patients. And we have a really good implementation plan in place. We've been working on it for a couple of weeks. And I really think that we're going to be fine in the medical field as far as, you know, keeping our patients safe as long as we continue to follow, you know, pretty strict guidelines set out by the CDC. And our team is on board, so we're pretty excited about getting, getting going again. Good. Your SRT patients, uh, I imagine they're older. Um, how are they coping with, with the fear factor? You know, they have done amazingly well. I'm very, very proud of them. They were um, not the least bit hesitant. Many of these older patients are living alone and they're unbelievably lonely and they just want to have someone to talk to. Their, you know, stress levels went up significantly and they were so grateful that we stayed open for them and you know, showed to them that we were cleaning the office and wearing our masks. Just took this off, just finished with my patients. Um, and you know, shared information with them. A lot of them came in in the beginning, you know, really having had watched the TV too much and were super stressed out. And I made a commitment to them that if they would turn the news off, and maybe start exercising and watching Lifetime movies and eating healthy and all that, that I would give them news based on, you know, my research every day when I came in. <clears throat> so they felt very comfortable in that. And these patients are now able to go out and share with their friends and family members that we are still going to be wearing this for a very, very long time. And you know, I really think offering our patients education and kindness and support, regardless of what sort of support they need, you know, sometimes it's not just taking care of their skin. Maybe it's taking care of their, a little bit more of their mental health needs at this point in time. So everyone was very grateful for their care and a typical graduation or their last treatment, patients would be celebrating that they didn't have to come in anymore. And these days, our patients are super sad because they're like, we're going to miss you. And, you know, they were part of my social circle and our team's social circle, and we were the same for them. So it's, it's interesting. Human nature is to be together, right? Yeah. 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 Very good. And what would you tell them to do from a high, since we're going to talk about hygiene today, what would sure. you tell them to do for hygiene? Yeah. Well, first of all, when they walked in, in the early days, they would 
walked through the doors and obviously they were screened via phone the day before. And then as they were coming in, they got the same CDC screening questions about travel and fever and illnesses and all that. But um, we also had them do a little squirt of hand sanitizer, which um, inherently is very um, against what I believe. I was actually part of a hand sanitizer study. I was the um, primary investigator on hand sanitizer study about 16 years ago. And we found that the infection rate, skin infection rate was actually higher in people who regularly used hand sanitizer compared to those who did not use hand sanitizer. So while patients were asking for it, uh, it was really hard for me to deliver on that. And that was part of the guidelines. So I tried to come up with an alternative and I actually put out on Instagram maybe 10 days or a couple of weeks ago about a little hack that I did with the CLN wash. And it's just, you know, rubbing it on like hand sanitizer and leaving it on. And it's a wonderful alternative just as a, a hand protectant. So everyone gets a little squirt of the CLN. Um, we are actually using the body wash, but you can actually use the, the facial wash too. It's got a little bit of glycerin in it. So it's a little bit more moisturizing. And our number one diagnosis that we're seeing right now is hand dermatitis. And it's people washing their hands, over washing their hands with harsh antibacterial soaps and using these um, hand sanitizers that are just, you know, 70% alcohol. So they get a squirt of their CLN wash. They're taken back to the radiation room. And, you know, we make sure they're draped and they get a lead liner on them. And then we deliver the radiation. Part of the protocol that I've used for six years during radiation is to have them use the CLN head to toe every day. And it's interesting, I have a big referral population from other dermatologists here in the Valley that don't do radiation. And on the day of simulation or the, the day that we, it's like a dry run through and we give them all the instructions, we tell them you have to start using the CLN right away. And many patients have actually come back and said they loved it so much that it got rid of their rashes and things that they've had for years and years prior to even starting radiation. So um, without sounding like a commercial for CLN, it has really been a game changer in my practice. So I started using it six years ago when I started doing radiation. Great, yeah, you've, you've taught us a lot about our own product, thank you. I know, <laughs> yeah. So what, what do you do uh, for your routine in your own household for, for hygiene? What, what's, your, what's your day like and how do you protect yourself and what do you tell the kids? Yeah, well, I think it's the same for all my team members because once they start here, you know, they hear me talking to the patients about um, use of clean head to toe every single day. And I personally wash my face two times a day with it too. I travel with it. You know, I have a little size, a uh, small size one that I travel with. And I, I do a lot of aesthetics as well. About 50% of my practice is aesthetics. So we use it in that, that uh, part of my practice as well. But I always tell my patients that I rate my skincare based on if I would pay 25 bucks to get it in my my luggage, you know, to even go away for a weekend. So I would definitely pay 25 bucks to get it in my luggage. Okay. Um, my whole family uses it. The guys really could have nothing else in the shower. They use it as a shampoo and a body wash. Um, and like I said, same goes for all my team members. So when someone new starts here and they start hearing it, they really think we're all, you know, a little bit crazy about this CLN, um, but they soon find out that they love it. Great. Um, so as far as your aesthetic practice, um, are you going to start taking patients next week? Are you? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that, that part of my practice will be a bit slower, but unfortunately we've had to already cancel more than six weeks of patients. So my aesthetics patients, um, um, most of all are very excited and anxious to get back in. <laughs> so we will be starting, you know, on a slower pace. Like I said, the flow of our office is going to be quite a lot different when patients come in. We're actually going to have 
someone at the front door screening patients with the questions, taking their temperatures, and kind of directing. We're going to have actually headsets for our assistants and our team so they can say, you know, John Smith is here to see such and such a doctor. And then that assistant will come and immediately take them back to their room. There will be really no waiting room. We are calling it a reception area. And that should be a seamless um, process flow through our office directly from the front door to the exam room. Everything will take place in the exam room as well as checking the patient out and rescheduling their next appointment. So it should be a touchless um, experience for our patients. And we're really hoping to make our patients feel very comfortable and at ease feel like we're taking really good care of them. Which, uh, what type of aesthetic patient is most keen to come back and see you? I would say the injectable patients probably. The, the, <laughs> you know, the injectable patients, like patients who need their neuromodulator, their Javeau, um, Dysport, Botox, all of those are neuromodulators that I use on a regular basis. Um, because it's relatively um, inexpensive and quick to do. It's sort of that lipstick effect that we've known throughout the ages that, you know, women will never give up the beauty part of their practices regardless of the economy. And this is one of those procedures that, you know, most people are very willing to pay the few hundred dollars that it takes to get rid of their wrinkles and get rid of some of their stress lines. Right. So let me jump to another topic. Uh, as far as your colleagues that are in the hospital, a um, couple groups, one in the front lines, I imagine you've uh, spoken to them and um, are you doing much with them? And then the other uh, topic is, you know, the PPE really impacts the face, especially, you know, if you see a lot of nurses, indentation, you know, laceration, it just, it looks, it looks pretty traumatic to the face. What are your recommendations for them? And is it moisture or is it pressure? Talk about the hospital worker. It's actually both. You know, early on in this pandemic, you know, I got to thinking a lot about it as all of us have been, but especially in the healthcare field, about how this was going to affect, you know, our own lives. And we, you know, we're talking about this and we have a morning huddle with my team every morning and and I said that you know I think we're going to see a lot of acne induced by masks I think we're going to see a lot of hand dermatitis and that's exactly what we've noticed um, these masks cause occlusion especially now with the warmer weather coming up we're going to see even more acne from perspiration and occlusion of those hair follicles patients are physicians and nurses and healthcare professionals are uh, experiencing all those things. We've actually done multiple telehealth visits on these uh, practitioners on the front line. And um, it's all about hygiene and just really making sure that their skin barrier is intact because most of the, quite a few of our dermatologic disease processes are caused from inflammation and from barrier disruption. So eczema, acne inflammation, rosacea, um, you know, just people with super sensitive skin. And then you add on excess soap, antibacterial soap, the sanitizers again that we were speaking about. And it's just a recipe for disaster for our skin. So it's very important that our skin barrier remains intact. And that's why this is such a great product to repair that barrier and um, heal it. So we have that shield up. When I talk to my pediatric patients, I always talk to them in terms of our skin is our shield. And if you've got a bunch of holes in your skin, you know, your skin is dry and broken down, all the invaders are able to get in, right? So right. bacteria, fungus, yeast, and even viruses. So it's super important to repair that shield. So we are um, have better defenses against the outside invaders right right so what is the number one thing you would tell um 
people going forward in the next three to six months, whether they work in the hospital or not, uh, for them to protect themselves? What, what is your, what would be your recommendation to them? Well, it's my personal um, opinion and it's my mission to get the word out that we all need to wear masks. I mean, I, I tell, you know, my team every morning, I reiterate it over and over because I really want them to mimic these terms that I wear my mask to protect you and you wear your mask to protect me. So I think masks are critical whenever you're in public places, absolutely mandatory. And then I think we just need to be very, very cautious. I mean, I um, have been a huge advocate for, you know, paying attention to what we're touching as we're going through life. Um, you know, we all know about using, you know, soap and water when we've uh, been in a public restroom, but taking that paper towel, opening that door and, and going out and then tossing the paper towel in, in a trash. Um, the other thing is, is I feel very comfortable. I would feel very comfortable to travel at this point because I, we know how to protect ourselves. So we wear our masks and we sanitize the space we are living in for the next few hours or day and make sure that those spaces are clean for us. And I think that if we're all paying attention to this, there, we should be able to keep this curve sort of low and we maybe won't have as high a peak. Obviously, once things are opened up, we are going to see a rise in cases. It's just going to happen. But I think the more accepting we are of everyone wears masks and everyone you know, protects each other, I think the better off the whole um, community will be. Right. The point of both sides wearing the mask is really critical. I mean, that reduces the chance. Very. Uh, yeah, both both ways. Well, um, I think our uh, well, our fifteen minutes was uh, <laughs> has gone by quickly. Okay. Uh, and um, Dr. Romine, I want to thank you, and I hope you stay safe. And uh, we may have to do this. Uh, uh, over in the next few weeks. We're learning a lot more about this disease, and the more we learn about it, the harder it is really to manage. And my, my recommendation is just stay safe and try not to get it because the, um, you know, impact is so, so severe. Um, maybe the next time we talk, we can talk about the skin manifestations of um, uh, of COVID, which are certainly many and it's probably vascular. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really proud of us though. I mean, as a, a human species that we've really come together in a community and really all for the first time in what a million years that we've all been fighting the same enemy. So I think if we have that spirit that we can do this and come through this and all band together and help each other out, I really, I'm I'm very, very hopeful. I'm an optimist, as all my friends know, but I really, truly believe that that can happen. Yes, that's a, a, gr a great advice. Thank you so much. I appreciate you joining me and uh, look forward to talking to you in the coming weeks. Thank you. Great, great to see you. Good seeing you. Bye, everyone. Bye.